Here is a cervix. In fact, it looks like it may very well be a cervix from the colposcopist point of view. Here is a shiny ectocervix, and here is a more mucousy and hemorrhagic type endocervix. Somebody was nice enough to draw a nice squiggly black line separating the shiny part, probably lined by squamous epithelium, non-keratinized, from the more ragged hemorrhagic uh, mucousy part, which would normally be an endocervix, but it looks like it is kind of extending out. This may be part of a pathologic process, but in all honesty, you really wouldn't want to call it that until you put it under the microscope. So let's do that. Well, once again, this is a stratified squamous mucosa here. It's nice and shiny. It's smooth. There are some glands underneath it. There's also a spattering of inflammatory cells here and there around the glands under the mucosa. That's not terribly uh, uncommon. And let, let's move to the other end of the uh, <coughs> uh, cervix, in which is predominantly glands. And you would expect or hope that the overlying mucosa was also glandular, but it's not. It, it was perhaps once a glandular or columnar epithelium, but now it has been replaced by a multi-layered or stratified squamous. This process is called metaplasia. But in addition, if you look at this uh, abnormal uh, squamous epithelium, especially places like here, for example, and we go up a little bit further, we'll notice that not only is this a stratified squamous, but it is abnormal. First of all, you're seeing more mitoses, like here, and here, and here, and here, and here, than you should. In addition, some of these mitoses look sort of abnormal, like not bipolar, but maybe tripolar or abnormal. In addition to that as well, there appears to be absolutely no maturation between the basal surface and the higher surfaces. This is a maturation loss. All of these uh, are typical of severe dysplasia. Now, in the old days, uh, we used to stand around and fight. Half of us would be very smart and we would call it severe dysplasia and the other half of us thought that we were smarter and we would call it carcinoma in situ because we thought if we sign this out as severe dysplasia they're going to find some guy at a university that'll call it carcinoma in situ and we're going to look pretty stupid. Well we solved that problem about 20 or so years ago by uh, putting the same name for both the term severe dysplasia or carcinoma in situ. We decided to call that CIN3 for cervical intraepithelial neoplasia of the third degree, which covers both severe dysplasia as well as um, carcinoma in situ. In addition, uh, in Bethesda, a few jokers later on decide to change the name again, and they decide to call this SIL, uh, high grade for squamous epithelial uh, lesion. But it doesn't matter what you call it or what buzzwords are in vogue. The processes have always been the same. Loss of maturation pattern, big dark ugly nuclei, increased mitoses, some of which look abnormal. This is all a sign that a cancer is starting to appear. Thank you very much.